When you look at a plant, your first thought is probably not, that thing gonna kill me. But in some cases they might be. Sure, plants can be delicious, yet some can have different kind of compounds inside them. That doesn't go well in you. So here are the top poisonous plants that you don't want to mess around. At number three, deadly nightshade, also known as Atropa belladonna. Deadly nightshade, or as some call it, Atropa belladonna. This plant's got a history that's a mix of cool and chaos. So grab a seat and let's dive in with a friendly warning and some tales of how it can mess up your day if you're not careful. All right, so what's the deal with deadly nightshade? Well, it's like Mother Nature's got a mischievous side with this one. It's got these tropane alkaloids, with atropine and scopolamine being the main characters. These guys are famous for their party tricks, and by party tricks, I mean they can send you on a wild trip. Think delirium, <laughs> hallucinations, and if you really overdo it, a one-way ticket to the great beyond. Now, atropine and scopolamine aren't your average substances. They're experts at blocking acetylcholine receptors in your brain and nervous system. What does that mean? Well, it can make your mouth dry as the Sahara, turn your vision into a blurry mess, give you heart palpitations, throw you into a pit of confusion, and even make you do the seizure shuffle. Crazy, right? Back in the day, some folks used this plant's berries and leaves for a bit of a psychedelic adventure. They even used them to make pupils look bigger for a wild fashion statement. Deadly Nightshade is like the globe trotter of the plant world. Originally from Europe, North Africa, and Western Asia, but it spread its wings far and wide. It loves chilling in woody spots and waste areas and stands out with its fancy purple bell-shaped flowers and shiny black berries. Now, here's where things get tricky. The amount that can send you into a downward spiral varies. For grown-ups, just two to five of those berries could be game over. Kids? Well, they've got even less wiggle room. And the leaves and roots... They're like the heavyweight champs, packing a concentrated punch. Even a nibble from these can set you on a wild, unwanted journey. Deadly Nightshade has a resume that includes accidental poisonings and some pretty nefarious schemes throughout history. But believe it or not, the bad boy still has some legit roles in medicine. Doctors use the alkaloids from this troublemaker to control saliva before surgery and make your peepers pop for eye exams. At number two, Foxglove, also known as Digitalis purpurea. Meet Foxglove, a tall and striking beauty sporting those unique purple, pink, or white bell-shaped flowers. This European native has a knack for popping up in all sorts of places, from woodland clearings to moorlands, and even in the cosy corners of your grandma's garden, because, let's be honest, it's a looker. Now, what makes Foxglove such an interesting character? It's all about two compounds called digitoxin and digoxin, both of which are cardiac glycosides. These little guys have a special talent. They can give your heart muscle a pep talk, making it pump like a champ. In the right doses, Digitalis, the medicine made from foxglove, is like a superhero for your heart. It's used to tackle all kinds of heart issues, from heart failure to atrial fibrillation. Digitalis swoops in, boosts heart power, and keeps your ticker's rhythm in check. 
But here's the twist. The line between the right dose and too much is razor thin. We're talking walk on eggshells kind of thin. This is what we call a narrow therapeutic index. Tiny slip-ups can land you in trouble. Signs of digitalis overdose include feeling queasy, tossing your cookies, literally, getting woozy, losing your marbles, and seeing weird stuff like yellow or green halos. And in some cases, it can even mess up your heart's beat, leading to a dance with the Grim Reaper, arrhythmias or cardiac arrest. Not a fun stuff. Back in the late 18th century, an English physician named William Withering rocked the medical world by using foxglove to treat dropsy, which we now know as congestive heart failure. But because foxglove is like that tricky friend who's fun to hang out with but needs careful handling, it's usually healthcare pros who manage it. Accidental poisoning is where things can go south. Sometimes, Foxglove gets mistaken for a more harmless plant, or someone who isn't in the know about its dark side munches on it. That's why foragers and gardeners need to be in the loop. If you've got Foxglove in your garden, stash it somewhere the little ones and furry friends can't nibble on it. Those vivid flowers might be tempting, but the damage they can do is no joke. Coming at number one, oleander, scientifically known as nerium oleander. Oleander, or as the scientists call it, nerium oleander. It's one of those plants that look like a million bucks but can throw quite a curveball in terms of toxicity. So, let's dive in and chat about this pretty yet perilous garden guest. Oleander is like the showstopper of the garden world. These bushes can put on a flower extravaganza with petals in shades of pink, red, white and yellow. Plus, they're like the superheroes of the plant world, tough enough to endure droughts and lousy soil conditions. But here's the catch. Every part of Oleander is packing a toxic punch. It's got some unwelcome guests called Oleandrin and Nereen, and they're like the villains of the story, especially when it comes to your heart. If you accidentally chomp down on any part of Oleander, you could be in for a rough ride with nausea, puking sessions, extra drool, belly aches, the runs, a heart that's marching to its own beat, and in the worst cases, a one-way ticket to the great beyond due to heart rhythm chaos. Believe it or not, there are even horror stories of folks getting poisoned from honey made by bees slurping oleander nectar. History's got some grim tales about oleander too, with mentions of it being used for deliberate poisonings and even as a way out for some ancient Romans. They thought it could stop their heart in a flash. Not a happy ending. Fast forward to today, and oleander poisoning is no joke, especially in places where this bad boy grows like a weed. It's a real hazard for the little ones and our furry pals, who might think those flashy flowers are a snack. And there's a wild twist. Some folks use oleander sticks to skewer food without knowing they're playing with fire, leading to accidental poisonings. So. If you're going to have oleander in your garden, make sure everyone in the house knows about its dark side. Keep it far away from where kids and pets hang out, and don't plant it near your precious food crops. Oleander's beauty might be dazzling, but it's got a dangerous edge. All right, that wraps up our dive into the world of dangerous plants. Isn't it wild how something so beautiful can be so deadly? We've seen how these plants can be both a curse and a blessing from ancient times to modern medicine. 
It's a bit like nature's own version of a double agent, don't you think? So the next time you're out and about, or maybe just chilling in your garden, remember these fascinating stories. Think about how these plants have been part of some crazy historical events, and even how they're helping in medicine today. It's like every leaf and petal has its own secret story. Let's keep our eyes open for the amazing and sometimes hidden wonders of nature. Who knows what other secrets are out there, right? Stay curious and let's keep exploring this incredible world we live in. But maybe, you know, not snack on any mysterious plants we find. Stay safe and keep having fun with all these weird and wonderful bits of knowledge. If you haven't already, please consider to subscribe and give us a like if you found this content informative. And remember, you can always leave your comments and suggestions down below. If you want more content like this, or if you have any specific topic you'd like us to cover in the future, please let us know. Your input shapes the direction of this channel. You may also want to check our video. Terraforming Mars. The Making of Earth. 2.0. And the Making of the First Filipino Airboat. Thank you for watching.